major shakeups in the top 10, four brand new teams, and some huge rank versus rank matchups coming your way in week eight. We preview the new AP Top 25 poll next on the Gridiron Expert. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, bringing you some of the best college football news, predictions, and analysis. After a wild week seven, where we saw eight teams in the top 25 lose, we knew we were in for a major shakeup in the new AP Top 25 poll. And that's exactly what we got, especially in the top 10. And this is the first time all season that we have seen a major shakeup among the top 10 teams. So as always, we are here to break down these new set of rankings, take a look at whether we agree or disagree with them, and preview some of the games coming your way in Week 8 that will have a major impact on the rankings in Week 9, and of course, getting you ready for those college football playoff rankings that will be coming out in just a few weeks as well. But let's take a look at this top 10 first, where you can see there are some notable changes. None bigger, of course, than Georgia, who is down 7 spots from number 3 to number 10 after their insane upset loss at home to South Carolina, a 2-3 and three South Carolina team that could get no offensive production going whatsoever, but was their defense that was the difference maker in Athens, forcing four turnovers from Jake Fromm and upsetting the number three team in the country as 25-point underdogs. So the Bulldogs were, of course, the biggest dropper out of all the teams in the top 25, dropping seven, and dropped from three to 10th. And in my opinion, I think the Bulldogs probably should have been a little lower than that. A little lower than 10th. Because losing at home is that big of a favorite to an undermanned South Carolina team? That obviously shows you're not the number three team in the country. I would have moved Georgia down from maybe 10th to maybe 13th. But, of course, that's just me. Alabama, of course, remained unchanged. Crimson Tide exerted their dominance once again over a then-ranked Texas A&M squad. Beat them fairly handily, although probably allowed too many points than Nick Saban would have liked but nonetheless won at College Station over the Aggies. They're still number one. Another major change, though, comes at number two. Guys, we could be shaping ourselves up for another game of the century on November 9th when LSU travels to Bryant-Denny Stadium to take on Alabama. The Tigers move up three spots from number five to number two after their win over then number seven Florida. That was the game of the week in week seven, and it lived up to the hype. A back-and-forth game the entire way through. LSU getting, getting a game-clenching touchdown with a little over five minutes left. Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, 54 yards, 42-28 LSU victory over the Gators. <clears throat> and Ogeron has his team on the right track. Joe Burrow and this offense looks nearly unstoppable, putting up huge numbers, huge points, huge amount of yards over one of the best defenses in the country. LSU deserves that number two spot. And assuming Alabama and LSU take care of business all the way through, we are going to be shaping up for a number one versus number two matchup in November. Clemson and Ohio State, due to LSU's victory over Florida, each dropped one spot because while Clemson took care of Florida State, while Ohio State didn't play, that it just made sense for LSU to jump. They beat a quality opponent, a top 10 opponent, while neither of those two teams really did anything spectacular. So they each dropped a spot. Oklahoma moved up one spot after their win over now number 15 Texas, winning by seven at the Cotton Bowl in the Red River rivalry. Wisconsin is up two spots after their 38 to nothing victory over Michigan State. And to put that into perspective, guys, Wisconsin has played six games. Four of those, four of those six games have been shutouts. And this one over Michigan State was by far the most impressive because the Spartans were probably, outside of Michigan, the toughest test that Wisconsin has faced. It was a Big Ten opponent, a Big Ten opponent with a good defense, and Wisconsin dropped 38 and didn't allow them to score a single point. The Badgers, in my opinion, are a top four team in the country going into Week 8. The way their defense is playing, the way Jonathan Taylor is playing, the way Paul Chris has transformed this team after a disappointing 2018 campaign, if I had to pick a top four right now, Wisconsin would absolutely be in it. They move up two from eighth to six. Penn State is up three spots. So another Big Ten team. Look at these Big Ten guys. Ohio State, Wisconsin, and Penn State all in the top ten. So watch out because we're going to be shaping up for a huge final race in the Big Ten, especially in the East. 
between Ohio State and Penn State. And then the winner of that matchup should more than likely be taking on Wisconsin in the Big Ten Championship game. So watch out for these three squads as the remainder of the season goes on. But the uh, Nittany Lions taking care of Iowa at Kinnick Stadium at night. Now, Iowa, a disappointing performance against Michigan two weeks ago. Maybe maybe some you look at that and you think, well, Penn State should have beaten Iowa. But you have to understand the stakes and the environment that Penn State was going into. Not many teams are able to go into Kinnick Stadium at night and defeat the Hawkeyes. It's one of the most difficult things to do in all of college football. Well on up there with going into Death Valley at night and defeating the LSU Tigers. Penn State did it, though, winning by five and deserved to move up from 10th to 7th, arguably major college football playoff contenders. Notre Dame is sitting at eight, moving up one spot with their win over USC, a game that was a little too close for comfort, a little too close and more close than I think people expected, but still got the win over the Trojans. Florida only down two spots after their loss to LSU, and I agree with that. The Gators should not have dropped out of the top 10. Had Florida dropped out of the top 10, I would have been irate because they put up a very good fight, had a phenomenal day with the passing game with Kyle Trask. Florida still is a top 10 team, and of course, we are shaping ourselves up for a huge showdown between the Gators and the Bulldogs, a game that in the preseason was going to determine the SEC East, and now after both of these teams lost in Week 7, will still determine the SEC East, unless, of course, Missouri, who is now in at 22, runs the table and beats both of those squads. And then, of course, Georgia rounding out the top 10, dropping seven spots from 3rd to 10th after that inexcusable loss to South Carolina. So, major shakeups in the top 10, guys. The most we've seen all season long. And that was to be expected as we saw the best and most exciting week of college football in 2019. Over the course of the entire season, Week 7 was the wildest. It was the most exciting and had the most stakes in terms of the the big games, the ranked versus ranked matchups, the type of games that we had in week in week seven. So that was to be understood. That was to be expected coming into week eight. Looking ahead, I can expect a similar result in week nine. If you look ahead, assuming people take care of business in week eight, we're going to have a huge shakeup after the after week nine. So many ranked versus ranked matchups there that will determine college football playoff races, conference races, and will majorly shake up the top 25 poll. We can't look too far ahead, though. We've got to focus, focus on the present. So we've talked about the top 10. Baylor and Cincinnati also moving up four spots each. The Bears coming back and defeating Texas Tech, losing the lead late, forcing overtime, double overtime as a matter of fact, defeating the Red Raiders, moving up four spots there to number 18. And then we have, of course, Cincinnati, who just joined the 25 last week, moving up four spots with their impressive road win over Houston, who allegedly is tanking the rest of this season. Don't know if I believe those reports, but, you know, you never know. Outside of Georgia, Iowa was the second team that dropped the most spots, dropping six spots. The Hawkeyes sitting at 23rd. They were number 17 with their home date against then number 10, Penn State. It was only a five-point loss, but a game that had Iowa won the turnover battle or just not committed turnovers themselves and finally found a bit of a groove on offense, probably could have beaten Penn State. Uh, And the Hawkeyes, after back-to-back losses to Michigan and now Penn State, and after very poor offensive performances, I do agree with the very large drop from 17th to now 23rd. So those are the largest droppers. Those are the largest movers after Week 7. We have four brand-new teams, uh, Minnesota, Missouri, and Appalachian State, all joining the top 25 for the first time this season. And it's about time the Golden Gophers got in there. P.J. Flex got his team sitting at undefeated, uh, major showdown against Wisconsin this season. Guys, everybody's talking about the Badgers, but if Minnesota continues to run the table, that game against Wisconsin to, at the end of the season could very well determine who wins the West, the Big Ten West. So don't sleep on the Golden Gophers, who struggled early on in the season uh, against weaker opponents, who get, were given a much bigger fight than I think many expected, but won those games, are now undefeated, jumped from unranked to 20th. Same can be said for Missouri, who after an inexcusable loss to Wyoming in the season opener, has bounced back and won five straight and should be 7-1 and one when they travel to Athens to take on Georgia, a game that will have major SEC East title implications. And then Appalachian State, out of the Sun Belt, guys, coming in once again, remaining undefeated, huge win on the road against Louisiana Lafayette, uh, a team that is arguably their biggest competitor in the Sun Belt, at least from the Western Division. And I know some people don't want to hear that. I know people want to say Arkansas State is. But right now, Louisiana 
was the only team that gave Appalachian State a fight last year and really has yet to give Appalachian State a fight this season in Sunbelt Conference play. So despite losing uh, Scott Satterfield, despite losing some big starters, Appalachian State, an experienced team, cracking the top 25. We've seen it before, and as soon as they got in there, they lost. Can the Mountaineers stay in and try to compete for a New Year's Six Bowl game appearance because they do still have a date against South Carolina later on in November. And beating the Gamecocks, remaining undefeated, and beating a Gamecocks team that beat Georgia would be huge in boosting Appalachian State's resume and getting to that New Year's Six Bowl game. Of course, Boise State, sitting at 14th, will clinch that New Year's Six Bowl spot if they run the table and remain undefeated. The Broncos coming off a very impressive win over Hawaii uh, in Boise. And then, of course, the last team, don't want to disregard them, Washington coming in at 25th. Dump not really new, but they did join the rankings again after an impressive road win against Arizona. Washington been a very inconsistent team all season long. You don't really know what you're going to get out of the Huskies week in and week out, but if they want to have any chance of trying to preserve their very slim, and I mean slim, Pac-12 title hopes, they have to be Oregon this weekend at home. 25th ranked Huskies hosting the 12th ranked Ducks, ones that have major Pac-12 conference and Pac-12 uh, championship implications. So can Jacob Eason go up against this very stout Oregon defense? And can the same be said for Justin Herbert going up against a very good Huskies defense as well? Huge Pac-12 showdown coming your way on Saturday afternoon. Conference by conference breakdown. No surprise that the SEC and the Big Ten are once again tied for the most representatives in this set of top 25. The SEC at six, the Big Ten also at six, but the SEC having four teams in the top 10, Alabama, LSU, Florida, and of course, Georgia. But as we mentioned earlier, the Big Ten looking pretty good themselves. You've got Ohio State, Wisconsin, and Penn State. So four for the SEC, three for the Big Ten, 70% made up of SEC or Big Ten schools. Obviously some major dominance there. Undisputed that those are the top two uh, conferences in the entire nation. The Pac-12 comes in at third with four representatives. The Big 12 with three. Uh, excuse me, the group of five now with four ahead of the Big 12. Group of five looking very solid with teams like Appalachian State, Boise State, SMU, and Cincinnati. So uh, once again, you got two of those in the American Athletic, one from the Sun Belt and one from the Mountain West. And then the Big 12 with three, the ACC with just one, and that one is Clemson. Clemson, the only representative out of the ACC after Virginia fell to Miami on the road last Friday night. And then, of course, the Independents only having one team as well in Notre Dame, who's sitting at number eight. Major rank versus rank showdowns coming at you this week that we will, of course, preview in our week eight predictions coming out tomorrow. We mentioned 12 Oregon taking on number 25 Washington. You also have number 17 Arizona State traveling to Salt Lake City to take on number 13 Utah. Arizona State, Herm Edwards, guys, a dangerous, dangerous team. Just took down Mike Leach in Washington State. Went on the road and took care of Michigan State earlier this season. They are a very dangerous team and absolutely Pac-12 title contenders. Going to be a very tough test for this elite Utah defense that just took care of Oregon State. But Arizona State, of course, going to be a much more difficult test for Kyle Whittingham and his Utes. I was almost, I'm very surprised that College Game Day did not choose to go to Salt Lake City. But now College Game Day is going to number 16 Michigan to number 7 Penn State. A game that has been very lopsided. They've traded blowouts the past few years. A few years ago, Penn State annihilated Michigan. Last year, Michigan annihilated Penn State. What will be in store in Happy Valley this Saturday? The whiteout game for the Nittany Lions. Will Penn State annihilate the Wolverines? Or will the Wolverines win or just keep it close? And they're, once again, slim hopes to keep their college football playoff and Big Ten title hopes alive. So those are the only three ranked versus ranked matchups we have coming at you this week. All major conference implications, all major playoff implications. couple trap games as well. Number 18, Baylor, traveling to Oklahoma State. The Bears are looking solid. They're bowl eligible, but can they stop Shuba Hubbard and Mike Gundy on the road? Same for number 9, Florida, traveling to South Carolina. Will, Miss, will, Mill, will Muschamp and the Gamecocks continue that success, continue and carry that momentum into Week 8 after potentially the upset of the year with their shocking win in Athens. The Gamecocks nearly beat the Gators last year in the Swamp. Can they do it at williams Bryce Stadium in Week 8? 
So some major games to watch out for. We're going to preview all of them in our Week 8 predictions. Don't miss it. But right now, your top 25 teams entering Week 8 of the college football season. And the college football playoff rankings are coming out just around the corner. Those are the ones that matter the most. And those are the ones that we will be breaking down and giving you our own rankings when those come out as well. But right now, we're going to continue giving you this analysis. These are the rankings that matter for the time being. And we have some big ones coming out the rest of this week and the rest of this season. So guys, thank you for watching us here on YouTube. Make sure you go follow us on Twitter at Gridiron Expert. Check out the official website, thegridironexpert.com. Sign up for the weekly newsletter, which will be coming out tomorrow. Sign up for the expert picks, where you'll receive all of our uh, all of our college football spread picks. And once again, thank you for watching us here on YouTube. Please continue to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time on the Gridiron Expert.